So hello, my name is Adam Minton. I am marketing manager uh, with Funko, specializing in games. And uh, I'm gonna be taking y'all through everything we have coming out for 2021. So what we are going to be covering today, over 40 new games for 2021 from Funko Games. Um, you know, some insight into how we work, what we do, we actually have a studio of 30 some odd people that uh, we design all of our games in house. Um, we are very unique in that we don't have, um, you know, designers names on the front of our boxes because everyone in our company works on every game. So we typically do have a lead designer, but they're not the only ones working on it. There's teams of play testers, there's graphic designers, um, there's, you know, all, all of the production development, the producers. So, you know, we, we do everything in house, uh, which makes us a little bit unique. Uh, so we're going to start with a uh, strategy game. So we have three Prospero Hall titles coming out this year. Greg, are you familiar with what Prospero Hall is? No, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm sure if you show me a game or talk about it, I've, I've heard of it, but I'm not familiar with, yeah. with the branding or the publishing or... Yeah, so uh, Prospero Hall is a um, basically a signature that we put on our games for gamers. So we've been using Prospero Hall prior to becoming Funko Games, um, and we've released, I think, seven, including the ones this year, of the Prospero Hall titles this year. So these are the strategy games. These are people uh, who are familiar with games. They are immersive experiences. So the first... Uh, signature Prospero Hall game we have is Fast and Furious. So this is a cooperative game for four players. Um, what's really lovely about this game and the next game I'm going to show you is that they are completely playable virtually. So right now people are having a hard time getting their gamer group together, but because this is cooperative, you just need a camera face down on the table. And this one is that signature movie moment in every Fast and Furious movie where they are racing 90 miles an hour down the highway. You can see the art of the street is even kind of blurred because everything is constantly moving. At the end of every round, you're wrecking cars, you're destroying enemy SUVs. There's three different scenarios that you can play through. So there's a lot of replayability there. Um, six different characters, so you can choose your character. They have unique stats. You can pair it up with any of the cars and the cars have unique stats. So as you're building your character, you have different abilities that you're very strong at. So you can work together, build your team. Um, the scenarios are um, a tank assault where you're trying to destroy a tank that's barreling down the highway. There is a chopper takedown where you're trying to destroy a helicopter that's flying above the board. And there's a semi-truck heist where you are um, trying to steal the cargo from the semi-truck, which is essentially the opening scene of the first movie. Um, but what really makes this game uh, feel like the movie is that there are these ridiculous stunts that you can do with your cars. So you can see on the left side of the board here, there's, you know, human catapult, side splitter, uh, all of these different crazy stunts. So, you know, with the semi-truck heist, you can actually take your car and slide under the semi-truck or the back of the truck opens up and you can drive your car into it, do ridiculous stuff. So every scenario comes with its own enemy deck. So enemies that are themed to that scenario and its own stunt deck. So they're specific to either taking down the tank or the chopper or the semi-truck. So this is, a, uh, it's actually out now. So you can get it today um, for $29.99, two to four players. Um, it is uh, starting to be very well reviewed. We're getting our review copies out to um, folks now. So uh, Amber is gonna be taking your wish list of anything you wanna get your hands on. And we'll make sure uh, we get you copies of anything you see here that you want as soon as we get the samples in. So that is Fast and Furious Highway Heist. Our next signature game is Goonies Never Say Die. This game, and I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, and it's not because I work here, 
This has quickly become my favorite game. It is a love letter to the 80s and the RPGs of the 80s, so it actually plays like an RPG, but it's fully scripted. So there is a GM, the Goondocks Master, and uh, there's a board that is modular for each of the nine adventures. So there's nine different scripted adventures. Um, it tells you everything that needs to be set up, so the GM at the beginning of the game can quickly grab all the components that they need. As the Goonies enter different rooms, they're going to encounter different things. The GM knows what they're encountering, so it's very easy to just pick up and play. Each session plays in about an hour. And again, completely virtual. And actually, if you're interested, I'm going to start running um, these virtual sessions where I'll be the GM and everyone else gets to play as one of the Goonies. Um, and, you know, if you drink. Uh, I'm making cocktail recipes um, so that everyone can, you know, play along. It's a very happy hour feel. Um, but you know, you pick one of the one of the Goonies. They have their strengths and abilities. The teenagers are there to help out. There's dice rolling. There's combat, um, but very um, accessible. Whether you're familiar with the RPG format or not. What's also really lovely about this game is, like I said, there are nine adventures. The first three adventures are very reminiscent of what happens in the movie. So it starts when the Goonies enter the caves, and it ends with um, finding the pirate stash and escaping the Fratellis onto the beach. But then the other six adventures get weird. So it's kind of what the Goonies expected to find in the caves, where there's ghosts, there's skeletons, you're actually encountering One-Eyed Willie himself. There is the giant octopus from the deleted scenes. Yeah, so there, yeah. was a lot, there was a lot of love and care put into this game. And the box itself is like three pounds. Um, this box from any other publisher would easily be $60, $70. Ours is $34.99. So lots of replayability. It's um, one continuous story, but unlike a legacy game, you're not destroying components. But there is story um, from game to game. If you win the previous session, you get a reward. If you lose the previous adventure, you get a penalty. So it does have a continuous story as you're going through. Is there like a just like obviously it's it's a cooperative game, but since you're, there's a, D, a GM, like is is can you win too, or is like what's is the yeah. goal to try to win over the other four players? Exactly. So it's four v one. Um, so you know, symmetrical. Uh, I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's totally asymmetrical. Um, there are things that the GM can do on their turn. Um, and unlike, you know, a classic uh, D&D where you're not going for a TPK, a total party kill, um, in this one, the GM is trying to uh, make the Goonies fail. Um, so there are traps that they can set. They can bring more enemies onto the board. Uh, you can see here next, between the box and the game board, there's a um, sand timer. So the GM is trying to increase the danger, and every time they do, some of the sand falls to the bottom, and if the sand timer ever runs out, then the GM has won, the Goonies have lost. With all of our games, uh, everything is original art, right? So we're not using, you know, even though we do, um, you know, a lot of movie tie-ins or- Yeah, uh, like this rights are expensive. <laughs> yeah, well, like this rights are expensive, but also we want to, build games from the ground up um so that is the goonies never say die so moving into family and party games so this is starting to skew a little bit younger these are the games that are very approachable for people who you know might pick up a game in the game aisle because it looks fun um not as deep not as strategic but still there's always a twist that we put on our titles that make them stand out. Even though they might be a familiar game style, um, we we always add a little, little twist, a little magic. So the first one I believe you've seen, ESPN Trivia Night. So this one uh, also currently available. Uh, this is a thousand sports trivia questions. So it is for the diehard sports fans, but also if you miss a question, 
There are dexterity challenges that happen at the end of the round, so you can recoup some of the points. Uh, it's very wacky. It plays like tiddlywinks, where you're trying to get a basketball through the net. You're trying to get an ice hockey puck into uh, that net, uh, a baseball over the plate. Um, so, you know, you're drafting your categories. So there's some thought that goes into setting up the round. So, you know, you might be very familiar with football. So you're going to get the, the riskier football question, but it's worth more points. Um, I might choose mascots because I don't know a lot about sports, but I might know the Philly Fanatic. Um, so there's a bunch of different categories. You're drafting how much, you know, you're, you're basically betting on how much you're going to uh, wager that round and then uh, at the end of the round there's a head-to-head -head showdown for extra points so next another party game Seinfeld the party game about nothing um, so this is for die-hard Seinfeld fans there are obviously trivia questions there is who said what challenges there are get up and act it out challenges, like you have to do the Elaine dance. Um, so very wacky, very, very party game. Um, and then at the end, if the, if the score is close, you can try to steal the win by doing the marble rye challenge, where you have a fishing pole and a, a marble rye, and you have to take it and flick it across the room and try to land on uh, the final score. And if you do, you steal the win. So definitely wacky. There's an up out of your seat element. Um, so fan favorite, it covers just, a, I think every episode. Of... Over 180, yeah, all 180 episodes is what it said on the slide, yeah. Yep. Um, and you'll notice this one is rated for 14 and up because it's Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah so moving on so now we're getting into uh the family party games so this is toy story talent show ages six and up uh this one uh we have a number of games that are um up out of your seat family games so you're not sitting at a board table you're not sitting at a, like this is you're getting up and acting out so it is a talent show you're trying to show off your skills so it comes with a number of different props um, all tying back to classic Toy Story characters, right? So there is Woody's lasso, or no, Jesse's lasso. Um, and, you know, you might connect it. And one of the challenges in, is you stand on one leg and you put the rope on one foot and then you have to jump midair and flick it onto the other foot. There's another challenge where it's like a little round of mini golf where you use Bo Peep's staff as a putter and you you know try to get the pixar ball through uh bullseye's horseshoe so there's a hundred different talents that you're trying to show off if you succeed you get um uh reward tickets like you would at a carnival uh, and the team that gets the most um reward tickets wins that's cute next idea we have Oh, sorry. What was that? I said that's a really cute idea for kids. Like, take like you said, your get up and like play mentality, so they're not stagnant, so they're moving. Is 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 it's cool. Yep. Which is what families need right now. <laughs> uh, so next is uh, Disney Mad Tea Party, and this is you can just look at it and know exactly what it is. It is a stacking game um, with the Mad Tea Party theme, so everything is crooked. The table is wobbly, so you're drawing these cards, which like I said, everything we do is original art. So they are, you know, the recognizable characters from the movie, but they are done in this beautiful watercolor, um, unique style with the, you know, watercolor background splashing, like the tea is falling. Um, so you're trying to stack the teacups as high as you can without them falling over. Um, very family fun, very simple, ages five and up. There are action cards that come up um, with, you know, d different challenges where the white rabbit might try to help you by removing a cup. But if you get the Cheshire cat, he'll make you stack an extra cup. So, you know, lots of uh, wacky fun. And the box, again, I need to show you some of these because the tea on there is this beautiful rose gold foil. So photographs very well. 
The stacking cups look gorgeous, so it's very editorial, very easy to photograph. Um, we have some lovely lifestyle photos in our press kit, um, and this one comes out this summer. That's crazy because like foil, like I know because I've friend works in printing, like foil and embossing and embroiling is not cheap when you do it on things. It gets very expensive very quickly, so that's a really cool luxury thing to make your box pop a little bit more. Yeah, and I mean, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I, I have a couple upcoming ones that are going to blow your mind when it comes to embossing and foil and uh, <laughs> some other, some other tricks. So now we're going younger um, and right off the bat, we announced it Monday. How it didn't leak, I will never understand, but it's a small world. So this one, uh, I think I have a camera set up, but completely 3D, stands up on itself. Um, are you a Parks fan, by the way, Disney Parks? Oh God, I mean, we got married there, so yeah. So yes, so then <laughs> you are very familiar with the attraction. And so this is a kindergarten aged game, aged four and up. Um, at its core, it's a matching game, but you can see uh, it's very magical. So you're gonna draw cards. You're gonna try to find, let's see, are there any matches? You're gonna try to match the children around of the world uh, in your room. Well, I don't see the match, but you can spin the walls to then try to find a match in the new room. They all rotate and you'll notice it's like a feat of engineering. They go right over the boat. The walls click back into place. What would a small world ride be or game be without the iconic clock tower? Um, the clock tower actually is the round counter. So you start at the beginning of the day and you're moving through the day. And then when the stars come out at night, the day is over. You count up how many matches your team got. And that is who wins the game. So very gorgeous. We announced it on Monday, which is the day that it um, became available not only on shop.disney.com, but in the parks as well. So this is at World of Disney. This is at the Main Street uh, retail store. Um, so, you know, this is a love letter to the attraction. Next, we have Disney Mickey and the Beanstalk. So this is another completely 3D game. It builds up out of the bottom of the box. You're actually coming up the beanstalk to the giant's dining table. You're trying to get food, bring it down to Happy Valley below. It, this is a cooperative game, very gentle gameplay, ages four and up. And this is another one where actual embossing, gold foil, you know, heirloom quality right on the shelf. So we are extremely happy with this game. Um, not only do we have this version coming out, later this year we have a collector's edition coming out where all of the figures have um, painted Art Deco on it. Um, so, you know, they're fully colored just like in the animation. So really, really lovely, stunning. Comes out this summer um, and it's under $20. It's nineteen ninety nine. Is that something that uh, Funko Games will be experimenting with in the future? Like more premium editions of games for like the person who's the collector or wants like more detailed uh, models or maybe instead of paper cutouts, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, plastic molded ones, that kind of stuff? Yeah, so I mean, it is something that we've started doing. Um, also, with our Funkoverse games, we've started to add chase figures. So, you know, for those collectors, they're looking for the chase figures that have alternate um, uh, art or um, paint, uh, just like a, a Funko Pop chase. Uh, then we have this line of Babysitter Approved. Now, Babysitter Approved is this seal that we started to put on um, some of our games. The idea behind this seal is um, these games can be taught to anyone by anyone. So these are not the games for gamers. It's kind of the opposite spectrum of our Prospero Hall titles. So we've play tested this with 11 year old babysitters teaching a four year old child and they had no problems. You're playing it in minutes. Um, they're very fun, very light. So the first one we have is Hidden Mickeys. 
um, which we also announced on Monday. And this is a twist on hide and seek. Um, since you are a huge Parks fan, I'm sure you are very familiar with what a hidden Mickey is. Um, so uh, at the beginning of the game, everybody together so that everyone knows where they are, but you go and hide the Mickeys in whatever area you want, right? It can be in your apartment, it could be the entire house, it could be the backyard, you could play it in a park, wherever you want to play it. You're drawing these cards. When you draw a card that matches the color of one of the Mickey heads, you start a timer, you have a minute to run, try to remember where that one was, bring it back. If you do, you score, you get one of these art cards. So you can see when you're looking at the Donald card, you can see the hidden Mickey and the pirate flag. Or when you're looking at the mini card, you can see the purple balloons form a little hidden Mickey. Um, and what's clever is that the number of Mickeys you can find is how many points that card is worth. So really fun, really light, six players, ages three and up, um, so very fun summer running around up out of your seat. Yeah. There's pretty much nothing that goes on the table except maybe the deck of cards. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So we, we saw that a little bit last year too. That's a cute game, cute idea. Yeah. And some of these um, babysitter approved even have handles. So you can, you know, carry it to grandparents' house or the babysitter can bring them when they watch the kids. Um, so, and a lot of these, uh, Rule sheets are one pages. Um, sometimes the rules are even printed on the inside of the box, like for Hidden Mickeys, so you literally can't lose the rules. Um, so that's Hidden Mickeys. Another one we have is Disney Pixar You Can Fly. Another big up out of your seat game. So you have these flyers that are themed as Buzz Lightyear, Dumbo, Tinkerbell, or Pegasus from uh, Hercules. And you set up these cloud numbers so there's eight so you are basically building an obstacle course and you match up on the left side here you can see these kind of challenge um tokens that you line up with the clouds and they um kind of add a challenge for each uh each throw right so you might have to throw it between your legs or if you get the Captain Hook one, you have to cover one eye like a pirate and throw it that way. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so very wacky, very fun. You're running around, trying to score the points, ages four and up. Um, and what's really lovely about this game is that uh, it is gently competitive in that if you score a point on your turn, you have these power tiles that give everybody else a bonus for the next throw so it might be they get to throw from closer or they um don't need to do the challenge uh you know the the challenge for that round so that one person can't steamroll the entire game right it's right? a catch-up mechanic right yeah exactly um so really lovely really light um and kids running around laughing having fun it's fun for the parents too because they're probably going to be worse at it than the kids um, and all of these foam flyers are very light. They are Tiffany lamp safe. <laughs> I like that's a good tagline, Tiffany lamp safe, because my mom, my mom in that age, was like nothing in the house, no, no yep. Nerf guns, no Nerf darts, nothing, yep. nothing in the house. <laughs> so another babysitter approved is Disney Princess See the Story. Um, did you get to see this one in action yet? Um, I think I think this is another one where like it was being talked about. Like they were, she was showing us what we were, we weren't allowed, but Amber was kind enough and trusted us to like not leak it. So they did, they showed us to us and I just cut it out. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I, yeah, need, yeah. I need to show you how this one works. So uh, this does play like bingo. Uh, it has all 12 Disney princesses. So it's a four player game where you're trying to, you know, get four matches in any direction. <clears throat> but you'll see that wishing well in the middle. And I'm going to show you how this one works. So there are these story coins that you put in this uh, bucket in the wishing well. And what you, what the goal of the game is, is to find two coins that match the same Disney princess story. What's lovely and magical and sets this game apart is as you spin the bucket, it fills the wishing well with the different tokens. You're trying to find tokens that match the same story. I don't see any here, but let's just say these two match. You would put one on your board to start that bingo pattern, put the other one in the bucket, 
and then the um, toy basically is smart enough to only repopulate and I'm holding it on an angle so it screwed up a little bit um, but only repopulate the ones that are missing so really lovely really fun again very light gentle play um, we actually did a photo shoot of this one uh, last week and there were these two adorable little girls playing it, these adorable five-year-old girls. And uh, we basically broke their heart when we told them that, hey, we need to move on to the next game so that we can take pictures of that one too. And they're like, no, we want to keep playing. Um, and so we actually sent them home with the demo copy that they were using. Um, That's funny. Yeah, so, you know, this one, uh, any Disney princess fan is going to really enjoy this. And because, um, you know, it's very gentle play, parents can easily play this one with the kids and not really get that bored. Um, and then we get into Funkoverse. So Funkoverse, I'm sure you're familiar with it at this point. Um, we have announced all five of our Funkoverse titles for 2021. So we have Darkwing Duck. This was a um, spring convention exclusive. It was obviously intended to be Emerald City Comic Con. That did not happen. Um, so it is spring convention. Um, this is the only, in all of the games we've ever made, the only retailer exclusive. Because uh, it, it was um, prearranged with Amazon. So of all of our games, you know, sometimes we have a first to market where one retailer might get it before others. Um, this one was the only one that's only available on Amazon. And um, I mean, it's Darkwing Duck, so give us a look that. We have Alice in Wonderland. So this is the first one, aside from Jaws last year, which had a bloody shark chase. Um, this one, Alice in Wonderland, has a diamond glitter encrusted Queen of Hearts. <laughs> so one out of every so many editions come with that chase variant. Um, and this one, because this game has been out for a couple years, we need to appeal to, or not need to, we want to appeal to those uh, fans who've been with us from the beginning. So we're now adding all of these new scenarios. So we started it with Game of Thrones last summer, where we had a four team scenario and that got carried into Nightmare Before Christmas last fall. And now with Alice in Wonderland, there is a croquet scenario. Um, the items in here are actually the flamingo croquet mallets. Um, so very fun, very themed to that IP. Then we have Avengers, which we were finally able to announce last week. So we have an Avengers 4-pack, and we have a Thanos 1-pack. So a Thanos expansion, and what's really fun about the Thanos expansion is that, you know, both of these editions come with new scenarios, but there is an Infinity Stone scenario for Thanos, where he can either be part of your normal party, or it can be a boss battle where it's everybody versus Thanos trying to collect the Infinity Stones. That's cute. And the and the, uh, the little tokens are all different colors for him too, which is cute. exactly they are they are the Infinity Stones. Um, and then just in time for the movie this summer, our favorite basketball Bugs Bunny mashup. Space Jam 2, A New Legacy. Um, this one comes with a basketball scenario. Um, and the chase variant on this one is there's a flocked bugs. So it's nice and fuzzy. So that's our lineup for Funkoverse this year. And then we get into Battle World. So this is Series 2 of Marvel Battle World Treachery at Twilight. We launched Battle World last year with Mystery of the Thanos Stones. This year, um, this is series two, 30 all new collectible heroes, new exclusive heroes in some of the additions. So this is the full lineup of what we have coming out this year. So we have two new mega packs with exclusive heroes. We have an upgrade pack that has reusable Thanos stones and a Spider Island Groot. We have Black Panther in his ship flying around trying to help everybody. We have a carrying case that fits 50 of the figures with their cards. Comes with an exclusive um, pork grind, which is a Venom version of uh, uh, Spider-Ham. <laughs> and they call him Pork Grind? They call him Pork Grind. That's funny. Uh, and then we have the Collector's Tower, 
which you might notice looks very similar to a collector's tower in one of the parks. Um, that is absolutely intentional, so it's the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Um, and this one's a dice tower that has dials on the front that make it a puzzle, so you're trying to drop a die in the top and have it come out on the front instead of the side. Um, but because it's, you know, physics-based, there's no one solution, right? Every time you turn the dials, it's gonna bounce around in different ways. 